Hi everybody, my name is Tom and I am starting an album review series. This is review number one and I couldn't think of anybody better to start things off with than with one of my favorite artists of all time which is Mr. David Bowie. Uh, I was in a great record store in Ann Arbor last week called Underground Sounds and picked up this record. This is his eponymous 1969 record. Um, I always call it his first record, even though technically it's not. I know his first record came out in 1967, I believe. Um, but I don't, I always go to this one as his first because to me this is really where his art, artistic temperament comes in and he starts writing songs that would be representative of his whole entire career. Um, the first album was kind of him finding his feet and he was being influenced by other things that were really not as more as you know I don't know how to describe it but essentially this is I see this as his first album I think a lot of people do I don't think I'm alone in that um, this is the 40th anniversary limited edition it's actually got a nice little poster inside of it and it's got look at this it's got liner notes um, with notes about every song um, little photos on the top so it's a nice package and it really sounds fantastic I mean I've listened to it a couple times this week and it just sounds great 180 gram vinyl it's really heavy record it's really nice so really enjoying it um, and I really find this album to be an interesting part of his catalog I, I kind of compare it to the first Neil Young record where he does some things on here that he never really returns to. That's why I find it very interesting. Um, he's pulling from a lot of different areas, you know, music hall, a little folk, a little psychedelia. He rocks out a little bit. Um, so he's, he's pulling from a lot of different areas and that this album is sort of all over the place, which is kind of what makes it charming. Um, I enjoy the journey that it takes you on. Um, not every song is a, is a classic, but there's enough on here to keep you, definitely keep your attention. Um, just a couple notes on this album. It was uh, recorded in 1969 and released in 1969. Um, it was called David Bowie in the UK and Man of Words, Man of Music in the United States uh, it was released on Mercury. The interesting thing about this record, it was also re-released in 1972 under the name Space Oddity, um, capitalizing on Ziggy Stardust. Uh, Bowie had just exploded with Ziggy and they decided to re-release this album uh, with the name Space Oddity because I think some people knew the, the single as well. Um, and they did a video for Space Oddity in 1972. Um, and there's also a video that you can find on YouTube where it's an early version of Space Oddity with, it sounds like a four-piece band, it's a very stripped-down version of it and um, he's cavorting around as Major Tom and Ground Control and it's very similar to what he's trying to do a version of Stanley Kubrick's 2001 because I know that the song was very influenced by 2001 um, a lot of people thought it was the moon landing. I, I believe it was written in 68 and he was, after he had watched 2001, is what really influenced that song. Um, but anyway, um, it was uh, produced by Tony Visconti, except for Space Oddity, which was produced by Gus Dudgeon. Apparently, according to legend, Tony Visconti heard the song and said, nope, I'm not, I'm not producing that one. Nope. He thought it was a cop-out, kind of a sell-out. He thought it was, again, he thought it was about the moon. He thought he was capitalizing on the moon landing. And so he thought, well, I'm not, no, I'm just, it's too cheap, cheap shot. I don't like the song. I don't want to produce it. And he called Gus Dudgeon, and Gus came in and produced it. Did a fantastic job. It's a great song. Um, brought a lot of studio pros in, including Rick Wakeman, later of Yes, who plays keyboards and... Um, 
He also plays some killer Mellotron on Space Oddity at the end. Just gives it that ethereal feel. Um, just such a great musician. And everybody that plays on those on his sessions with him always says the guy is just a wizard on the, on the keyboards. Um, not that we don't already know that. But, um, so, and then also Tim Renwick plays on this, who I believe played with David Gilmour and Roger Waters at various times. John Lodge, who I believe ended up um, in the Moody Blues. Herbie Flowers was on a lot of David Bowie albums after this. Um, Paul Buckmaster did strings for many different albums. Um, also, Gus Dudgeon produced Elton John's, all of Elton John's classic albums in the 70s, as well as in the 90s he, um, he produced XTC's Nonsuch as well. So, just all sorts of names on this album. So, getting down to the record itself, um, Space Oddity we've sp spoken about already. I'll just go through it quickly. Um, unwashed and somewhat slightly dazed, kind of a rocker, trying to be a rocker. Uh, starts off just some sort of strummy acoustic. Most of these songs start out with acoustic guitar. You can tell that most of this album was written on acoustic. And bringing in musicians to sort of flesh, flesh out the songs. This is one of those, and it really kind of, at the end, it's, 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 you know, it's somewhat rock. It's probably the most rockin' song on the album, but he doesn't quite get there. I mean, it's funny, and later, as soon as Mick Ronson shows up, the rock really comes, comes out on the next album. Um, uh, Letter to Hermione is a great song. Um, always love that one. It's a, a letter to his girlfriend, his previous girlfriend, who had just broken up with him prior to the recording of this album. And there's, there's a couple songs on here about her, so he must have, they must have been quite an item. Um, Signet Committee is a song about the arts lab that he ran in London, um, or outside of London, in 1968 and 69. Um, sort of a take on the Warhol thing, trying to, you know, bring artists and musicians and poets and painters together in a community. Um, and it was run by David, and he, I think he got a little bit frustrated because he felt like it was the David Bowie show, that he wanted more people to step up. Um, and I think that's what the lyric is about on this. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It's quite an interesting song. I, mean, it's, uh, um, I think it's this one where he, because I made some notes on some of these songs, I think it's this song where he, he, uh, yes it is. At one point he says, kick out the jams on this song. And I wonder if it's a little nod to the MC5. Uh, it's kind of a slow building song. And at the end it kind of really gets, it's kind of an epic song. And at the end he says, we want to live, I want to live. So it's, it's an interesting song. Good way to end the side, side one. Um, side two starts out with Janine, which is really kind of a throwaway poppy kind of song. Um, it's interesting that Tony Visconti turned his nose up at Space Oddity, but then would be okay with this one. That's, that was a little strange, I thought. but It's an okay song, but it's just very poppy, and doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't, you know, doesn't leave much of an impression. Um, and Occasional Dream, however, does. I, I really like Occasional Dream. I think it's a great song. I think it's very... I love the lyric of it, I love the melody, I love the vocal, um, and it's just a really well put together, I just love the way it's arranged, um, and it's, it's, it's very 60s, it's a very kind of psychedelia, 60s, folky kind of song. Sorry for all the editing, I keep getting phone calls, of course, right when I'm filming. Um, but anyway, um, we were talking about um, an occasional dream. Which again, I just love. Great song. Very of its time. But that's, again, the charm of this record. Um, which goes right into Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud, which I always liked. Uh, always wondered what it was about when I first heard it. Always wondered, kind of, what is this lyric about? And I found out recently it is about, um, it's based on a book that was written in 1805 called The Wild Boy of Averone. I believe it's how you pronounce it. Um, it inspired the title and some of the lyrics, and it's about a boy who's running with wolves his whole life, um, kind of like the kid from Mad Max, um, and comes upon a village, and um, they don't quite know what to do with him. Um, so interesting lyric, I like it. Um, kind of had some mystery about it, which I like. Um, God Knows I'm Good, uh, not one of his greatest efforts. 
it, it to me it's it kind of harkens back to um, some of the stuff he was doing before this album, which it just seems like one of his older songs to me for some reason. Not sure if that's true. It's based on a uh, a, a newspaper article about a woman who got caught shoplifting. Um, but the album ends on a strong note with "Memory of a Free Festival." What a great song. Um, my story about this one is um, a buddy of mine at the end of one of my cassettes uh, back in, in the 80s we were still doing cassettes and he would tape albums for me and at the end of an album you usually have a little bit of room at the end of a TDK 90 and um, you would put a song by another artist on there and I didn't know what this was it, this song came on and it with the chord organ holding that chord and then he says well, should I announce it? And you hear someone say, yeah. And he says, Memory of a Free Festival. And then it starts. And it's just got this whole vibe about it. And he's singing. And really, it's fun. what's interesting is I'm listening to this album recent, you know, just now, realizing that this is a solo performance, essentially. It's really him and an organ. And at the end, there's some overdubbing of some people, you know, doing the chanting and the... The sun machine is coming down and we're going to have a party um, over and over again. I believe it was five or six people around a mic and he kept over, Tony, Tony overdubbed it a couple times to make it sound like a big crowd. Um, and apparently, I don't know where I saw her read this, apparently Mark Boland was one of the people in on the session. Because they know, they've known, they've known, apparently been friends forever, knew each other at that time. Um, so... So it ends on this on a strong note. I really like that song. Um, and overall, you know, if I had to give this album a rating, I'd say about three and a half stars out of five, just because of some of the weak material on here. But generally, it's still a pretty strong effort. And I can put this album on and listen to it from start to finish and be pretty happy. Uh, I think most fans would 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 concur with that. It's just the it's very eclectic. And he's still finding his voice as an artist, but it's but it's all there. The, the, you can you can hear it. It's there. So um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe. Uh, please leave comments. And um, I think I'm going to stay with the Bowie theme, and I'm um, just going to keep going with Bowie for a while. So I'm going to go in chronological order. So the next next up is Man Who Sold the World. Um, so I'm excited to get into that one because Mick Ronson comes on the scene and that boy does that change things so um, That's it. See you next review man who sold the world. Bye